The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you perhaps catch the word that is found in both the first and second reading? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. This is way easier, right? You are witnesses of these things. That's how the gospel ends. Now I have to find it in the first reading. But is there. The first reading, Peter says somewhere, we are witnesses of these things. Check it out. I assure you it's right here. Um, I will never end this homily until I find it. <laughs> oh, here it is. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. This is Peter speaking. On the day of Pentecost, you remember, we are, during these days, the first reading, the day of Pentecost, the gospel reading, the day of Easter, the Easter Sunday. God raised him from the dead. Of this, we are witnesses. Same words, right? Same words. Actually, same author. We may say he tends to uh, right, use the same words all the time. Absolutely. Because they were words coming out of Jesus' mouth. And whatever comes out of him, uh, of his mouth, of whatever Jesus pronounced, had to be recorded. Had to be, uh, uh, had to penetrate into people's hearts and minds and memory. That that could be then testified witness to for the following generations, for everybody, beginning from Jerusalem, Jesus says, 
as Peter does and the other apostles, but then going throughout the world, witnessing the resurrection, the, to be witnesses. This was very important, even in the Jewish mentality and legislation. In order to condemn someone or accuse someone, perhaps, of something, two witnesses were required. Sometimes people would make arrangements, right, would agree on something, would be bribed, and uh, they would testify to something against someone. Two witnesses were enough. This woman has been caught in adultery. We have to stone her. Two witnesses were enough. For the Lord is the same thing. For the event of the resurrection, we need a witness, witnesses. But this kind of witness, uh, of, of testimony, is way different. It's not something to point at someone's deeds. It's something that testifies to what God has done in me. In me, in us, to be witnesses of the resurrection. We have touched the Lord. We have seen the Lord. We have experienced this new life. We are new people, therefore we can give witness to that. It's not because someone has paid us to do that. It's not because we are good Catholics. It's not because it's, the, it's what we have learned somewhere. We have read it, so we proclaim it. No, is Jesus who has come to us. And that's why this event of, of, uh, the, of the resurrection, the event of the Easter Sunday, the disciples, you remember yesterday's gospel, these men to men leaving Jerusalem, going towards uh, Emmaus, right? And then finding Jesus on their way. Jesus revealed himself in the breaking of the bread. There is a liturgy. And the context here is very liturgical. It's the context of the celebration. It's the context of what we are doing here now. The Eucharist, right? So they come back after recognizing Jesus. And what do they do? They go to the eleven now in the circle. And they tell them, we have seen the Lord. We have witnesses. But the others had, all, as, had also seen the Lord. We are witnesses too. We can share what God has done in our life. And that's how the Christian community, we may say the first Christian community, is born. Being one, brothers and sisters, in communion, perfect communion, because they all share the same experience not because they are all from the same clan, not because they are all from the same family, or because they like to do the same, to play the same sport. Uh, it's, it's people who have the same experience. And now in that very moment, like uh, continuing the liturgy, we may say, Jesus appears again. And now he says, he speaks about himself, explaining everything that is written about him in the scriptures. Now, he also gives witness to himself. Scripture. Again, a liturgical context, right? In every liturgy, we proclaim the scripture. In every liturgy, we somehow give witness we are present with ourselves, with our life. And we also come with our particular situations of life. How are we today? How did we get up today? How did the day begin today? For some better, for some worse, for some happy, for some worried. Each one of us is different. And we are all here. And Jesus tells us, give me something to eat. It sounds like a little detail to testify once again, I'm alive. I have a body. I can eat. But it's very deep, this of, uh, 
having something to eat is found also in other Gospels, particularly the Gospel of John. And in this Gospel of today, they, they have something, some fish, they say, baked fish. Uh, it's uh, something we may, we may say, well, it's normal. In the end, they were all fishermen, so what's in the, in the pantry today? Fish, right? <laughs> what else? Uh, but it's very deep. Fish is the, the food that comes from the sea. And uh, here we could spend a long time reflecting on this. The prophets had said when the Messiah comes, he will, have, he will eat the food coming from the sea. Why the sea? Because in the sea there is water. There is uh, dark. You go deep down in the waters. And it's this darkness. The waters represent dying, death. Like baptism, right? Like baptism. Here we see the baptismal water it was blessed at the Easter Vigil, and baptism is means immersion, going into where our reality, how we are today. What kind of fish can we give Jesus? Maybe our anxieties, maybe our anguish, our fears. Our death, uh, everything that relates to the water, yes, is death. Our, our fears, our, our sins, give them to me. We will make an exchange today. You give me your sins, and I give you myself. You give me your witness, and I will give you my witness. I will tell you that I am truly alive, risen, present here, and I can give you another food, another food. You don't have to have that uh, bland fish anymore. Uh, I will fill your life with something new, with the fullness of life. And this is the event of Easter. This is what will prompt eventually the disciples filled with the Holy Spirit to again give witness to that event, to the resurrection. And so we pray today that this may happen to us. May happen to us. That at the end of this celebration and in my daily life, I can continue this liturgy. I can continue this living experience all my life and ongoing liturgy in which the word makes sense to me, in which everything I have, good and bad, can be united to this mystery of the passion, death, the cross of Christ, his resurrection, and receive something new that gives meaning to me to my life, that gives life to me, to the full, that gives me the joy of the resurrection, so that then I can tell the others in the same liturgy, <laughs> I can tell everyone Christ is risen. He is truly risen.